So I want to talk about something that I think not a lot of people think about, and that's deck building and getting better at Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole. Because even though we're in a tier zero format, even though the format may be toxic to many, you can still at least improve your skills at the game. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy, you know what I'm going to say, that boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I really do appreciate all the support. I hope you all are having a wonderful holiday season, whether you celebrate Christmas, Kwanzaa, Boxing Day, uh, shove a ultra ball up your butthole day. <laughs> Uh, I hope that y'all are having a fantastic day. So this video was actually inspired by a subscriber of mine that I see in my comment section all the time. Shout out to Zane Truesdale for leaving a comment on my Morphtronic Runic Telephone FTK deck talking about how, you know, some decks, he wasn't saying that not all decks are evenly made, but just saying how, you know, there's certain cards that you can play in decks, like for example, Mayakashi that can make them better, i.e. Super Poly for like the tier element matchup, things like that. And that comment really got me thinking like, I know I've said in the past that, you know, not every Yu-Gi-Oh deck is created equally, but what I think what a lot of people don't think about is deck building and more importantly, how they are building their deck to achieve their goal. And by extension of that, why not every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is created equally and why some are just hot liquid ass garbage with big old chunks inside. So I want to talk about that because, I mean, there's no point in talking about the meta when the meta is just basically completely dead, right? I mean, we're just waiting for 2023 and Kashtir to come out Photon Hypernova in February at this point. And so, you know, when you look at Yu-Gi-Oh, especially modern Yu-Gi-Oh in a nutshell, you know, old school Yu-Gi-Oh, which I consider like everything honestly pre-dragon rulers so like everything 2012 and back um you know we saw a lot of decks that were good shit dot deck as people you say or good stuff dot deck based which i think is the most dumbass name i've ever heard you know like oh this deck is based bro no this deck is you need to go smack your mouth around with some soap that's the kind of deck it is based i think that's the dumbest shit i've ever heard which if you're gonna say that to me you better be putting badass sexy engine in my comment section <laughs> But, you know, we saw these good stuff dot decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! And you don't really see those very often anymore. We usually see decks like, let's say, for example, Tier Element with maybe little sub-engines thrown in. Perfect example of Tier Element would be that you are playing a 40-card deck, the majority of your deck is Tier Element cards, and maybe you're playing some Ashizu cards with maybe like a three to six, maybe if you're really pushing it, like a nine card buy steel package. Obviously you wouldn't call that a buy steel deck. You would just call it a Shizu tier element. You're just running basically nine DD crows or six DD crows, depending on how many buy steel cards you're playing, right? And so when you look at something like, just as a comparison, let's say the guardian monsters, right? If you've seen the original Yu-Gi-Oh anime, you know about Raphael's guardian monsters that basically their shtick is revolving around equip spells you know they have the backup guardian which we don't even have in the real game yet wouldn't matter the deck is still trash where you can use this effect to hot swap equip spells from different monsters if gravity axe grawl is on the field then you can special summon guardian grawl from your hand and equip it with the gravity axe you know things like that that's their shtick now you have to ask yourself and this goes for deck building in general you have to ask yourself how good is this deck at Building a board, especially in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, compared to old school Yu-Gi-Oh where you had multiple turns to, you know, play back and forth. In modern Yu-Gi-Oh, it's about building your board, building that castle, defensive wall. How good is, is this deck at building a board and progressing the game state? You know, whereas you compare that to something like Tier Element, right? When Tier Element goes first, hell, even second because they can interact with you during your turn... They are so good at building a board and progressing their game state and making boards that just basically stun the opponent out of even playing the game, whether it's Time Thief Redoer ripping a card off the top of the deck, Abyss Dweller locking out the graveyard during the first turn that it's summoned in case it's a tier element mirror, and then doing it again on the next turn in case it is a tier element mirror, and then the tier element player can't play and they're just sitting there with their diddly in their hand like, well, I guess I got to go to the next game because that is what made tier element good you have the buy steel cards it just makes them even better but then of course the ishizu cards just put them over the top insane and the fact that they have cards like 
the buy steals, which of course every deck has, but more Ashizu tier than anything because if they mill them, then you know they can just get any of them back with Magnemut. But the fact that even if they go second, they have Hoffenis, they have any buy steal cards that they open up with in their hand, they have ways to interact with the opponent. Even on your turn, when you're playing the game, they can interact with you and try and stop you from building a board. Whereas a deck like Guardians can't do that. And I feel like, especially with the release of Master Duel, aka Master Shits, um, we are seeing a lot more casual players come into the game, especially on YouTube. I, I see it a lot in my comment section, and I feel like I have uh, somewhat of an audience base that is mostly casual or just doesn't focus too much on the competitive game. And that's not to say that these players can't be competitive. I actually always encourage casual players to try and be competitive. Go to a regional. Go to a highly competitive local. See what it's like. Learn the game. Don't be ignorant and say, oh, I'm good. Then that's something that, I mean, that's kind of a whole other thing in and of itself. But that's something that, that really bothers me about like the casual crowd who think they're good when they're not. And I'll admit, I was one of those little kids where I was like, man, I'm going to go on in with my what I called an attack deck. It was just a beat down deck. I was like, I'm going to beat these kids and whatever. No, 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 no. I actually ended up leaving my first locals I ever went to early because they were taking forever to start the last round. But I was two and one. Probably would have finished out two and two. Um, and I mean, I was getting raffle stomped. I mean, I was happy that, you know, I lost, I think like my first round and then I won the next two, whatever it was. I don't remember. It was years ago, but I mean, it was teenagers, young adults playing gladiator beast, light sworn, dark arm return. Like this was 2008. This was the cusp of the synchro era. And I got my boo-boo stain pushed in. Like, I'm not going to lie. But now as years have gone on, I've gotten better and better and better. And unfortunately, Konami just hasn't supported every single deck the same as something like Sprite or Tier. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to play a competitive deck. But the fact remains that you have to be able to deck build to help progress your game state in a way that helps you achieve victory. You know, you look at a card like Dimensional Fisher or Macrocosmo. Those cards inherently do not progress your game state. Whereas a card like Pot of Prosperity helps progress your game state. Pot of Duality progress your game state. You're thinning through your deck. You have that gas to the floor to try and get the cards that you need. You know, that's why you see a lot of people side deck things like Macro or D Fisher because they're not going to main deck that shit. It's bad to main deck it because unless you win the die roll every single game going first, is the D Fisher or the Macro good? And even then, you're not always guaranteed because what if you're playing against Flunderies? Well, now you're playing three cards in your deck that are inherently bricks. They are just garbage. So why take that risk? Whereas you can just side deck them. And even if you are playing against something like Tier, if you didn't manage to go first game one, who's to say you got to show your opponent what you're playing? I mean, unless they hit you with a mill. But like if you know you can't break their board, just scoop before they even know what you're playing then side deck appropriately. Your opponent's not going to know how to side if they don't know what you're playing. The main thing that I want people to take away from this is to understand deck building and the best way to do it, honestly, I kid you not, is to net deck. Take a deck you see online, take it card for card and start, you know, messing around with things and see how, you know, you can edit it to fit your play style or maybe you find some spice that maybe that player wasn't playing or they mention it in like a YouTube video or whatever that you try yourself that you really enjoy. I'll leave you on this. I was helping uh, two kids several years ago um, to learn how to properly play Yu-Gi-Oh. They knew of it, they had cards, but they didn't know how to properly play. They watched the show. And at some point down the line, this is maybe about a year or two ago now, one of the kids was uh, talking to me on the phone. And, uh, you know, I was telling them about, you know, explaining chain links and combos and, you know, deck building and things like that. I mean, he was a younger kid, so, you know, I'm trying to keep it simple. And he talked about like, oh, yeah, I have this seven card combo where if I open up these six cards going second, I can make this field. And it's like with this monster equipped with Wonder Wand and da 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 da. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But, you know, I mean, I was honest with him. I said, you need to ask yourself, how am I able to beat my opponent with this field? Is it a strong enough field that your opponent can't beat you? You know, like that's a very simplified version. But I mean, I'm talking to a kid. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna be like, oh, your deck is trash. Like you don't even have any Omni Negates on the field. It, the, the point that I'm making with that story is, if you, are you building a deck that requires a seven card combo that is never gonna fucking come up? Or are you building a deck where you can do one card combos? A Shizu tier is one card combos, arguably. You summon Meryl, Mill 3, maybe you hit something that's all RNG. That's all besides the point. 
So when you look at the best decks and you see what they're capable of, you have to be able to ask yourself, can my deck do that too? Or can it do it, excuse me, to a degree where it can keep up with these decks? And that's why I feel like a lot of people got pissed off with my don't buy the Dark World Structure Deck video. I mean, granted, I was being negative. I was basically telling the casual base to not buy the deck. But had they actually watched the whole video, which clearly almost nobody did, uh, other than the dedicated fan base, I appreciate it. You know, I said specifically in that video, how the fuck do you beat tier? How do you do it going first? Because like now, hindsight being 2020, I can say, unless you're looping the opponent consistently with Silva's effect, if you're not doing that consistently enough to where you're beating them before they even have a chance to play, then you lose. End of discussion. We're in a tier zero format. Don't try being competitive with the deck. You can play whatever you want at locals. And I understand that. But to take it to that next level of being competitive that I encourage you to do, you've got to be able to understand these concepts. And it's something that it has taken me years to learn, and I do not claim to be an expert, but I hope that my video can help you get there closer than the years it's taken me to learn. And I'm no expert. I'm definitely a competitive player. I definitely understand this game a lot better than many other people, but I'm not perfect, and I'm learning each and every day. So guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.